In the workshop, fitting a mechanical lubricator to a Stuart 5A steam engine, part 6, link pins, cleaning and crosshead lubrication. In the last episode I described how I rebuilt the mechanical lubricator and now it's still working very well. One revolution of the crankshaft clicks the ratchet wheel one tooth. All the surplus parts are going to go in here, it's a small plastic box full of lubricator bits and pieces. I was going to make a pin for this, but as the other bearing surfaces on the pump use the threads of brass bolts, I'm using a steel bolt. For the drive pin at the eccentric end, I'm going to cut this blank bolt to length and thread it 4BA, but leave enough of it plain to act as a bearing surface. It's not an ideal bearing situation because it's steel against steel, but it will be fine for this application as it's always going to be flooded in oil. Moving on now to the brass tank, I'm giving this a bit of a clean and polish. First of all with Scotch-Brite, followed by this very fine wire wool, and then at the end of all that, I'm going to use some brasso wadding to try and get a good finish. During the silver soldering process, I think this part's got very hot, a bit too hot perhaps, and that's why there's a bit of a red mark on it, and it's taking some shifting. I don't want to remove the tank from the mounting, dismantle it and polish it up with the polishing spindle, so I thought I'd try one of these. These are special rotary tools which are made from synthetic rubber with pieces of diamond embedded in them, and they're quite good for this job. Obviously the friction factor is quite high, so I'm using some oil as a lubricant. And is it working? Well, yes I think it is, it's looking a lot better. After doing this though, I went back to the Scotch Brite, followed by the wire wool, and followed once again by the Brasso. Here's the Brasso wadding sequence, and finally I got quite a good finish on the tank. The finish isn't perfect, but it's good enough to match in with the rest of the engine. All it needs now is a final polish with a piece of cotton cloth, and it's okay. Although I haven't shown it on the video, I polished the lid using my polishing spindle, so this is nice and shiny too. Time to run the engine. First in forward gear, and now in reverse. I do like the sound of this engine in slow motion. In this clip I'm wiping away the ring of oil around the exhaust port, which shows that the cylinder lubricator is doing its stuff. Maybe the cylinder is being overoiled slightly, but that's really not a bad thing. And while on the subject of oiling, I need to devise some way of oiling the crosshead. On one side of the main standard only, cast into the crosshead guide, are these two special shapes. And they're not for reinforcement because they aren't at the other side. These are designed to be able to fit a lubrication system to supply oil to the crosshead slides. You could get away with just putting some right angled oil cups in here, but I have a better method. I'm going to start describing it from now on. Using my Proxon motor tool with a small drill bit fitted, I'm drilling pilot holes through these shaped parts of the casting. And by using the felt tip pen method and measuring accurately, they're exactly in the middle and it's most important to make sure that the drill bit goes in squarely. When using motor tools like this, which have a variable speed control, start off with a slow speed, then once the drill starts to bite, apply more pressure to it and turn up the speed, and apply even more pressure to keep the speed low just by the friction of the drill bit in the hole. A quick final check tells me that these holes are exactly half an inch from the inner part of the crosshead guide. So now with the speed turned up, I'm applying quite a lot of pressure to the drill bit, and as you can see, it's cutting the cast iron beautifully. Be aware though that if you let the speed run away, you'll just blunt the drill and it will stop cutting. It's most important to keep constant pressure on the drill bit. You will notice that I put a cloth over the working parts, but there's still going to be a bit of cast iron residue floating about. This is not a problem. I will blow it all away with my airline before I finish. But the cloth catches the majority of the clippings. I will eventually tap these holes 3 16 by 40 threads per inch, but this drill is below the tapping size, this is just a pilot drill. I really am working this Proxon hand drill very hard. Eventually the drill bit breaks through and then I use the airline to blow away all the residue. Once I drilled both sides with the pilot drill, I went half of the way through the holes using a tapping size drill for 3 16 by 40 threads per inch, and here I'm using a tap to thread the holes. 
being very careful not to snap it off. If I snap the tap off at this stage, that would not be good. You will notice that I'm not using any lubricant because cast iron cuts differently to steel, plus cast iron contains graphite, which is a natural lubricant. Here's a hole threaded 3 16 by 40 threads per inch, and what am I doing now? I'm screwing a brass fitting into it. A 3 16 by 40 threads per inch brass union fitting. And here's the full view with one at each side. I'm going to make an oil pump, which will allow me to manually pump oil to these two unions, which in turn will lubricate the crosshead and guide. I've made one before in a previous video, but this one will be slightly different. To finish this video, I'm just going to run the engine and just let you watch the normal poetry of motion. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.